So Dave, my, part of my interest in, in drinking tea and, and sharing tea is all the great health benefits of it. Mm. And I'm wondering if you could maybe share some of the, the health benefits. I know I've heard about uh, L-theanine, I guess it's an amino acid that kind of results in this relaxed alertness. And I'm just wondering what else is part of drinking tea that's so, so good for us? Yeah, yeah, I wonder too. Um, <laughs> it's a wonderful question and there's so many wonderful things that people say about what tea can do for you. Um, my take is always that the health, healthiest aspect of tea, um, and that's silly because it's very linear, but I'll do it anyway, mm. is um, the greatest benefit of tea is making the tea itself. Uh, I think, in this day and age at least, um, it's just obviously packed with so much goodness, so much health potential physically, but in this day and age where people are moving so fast all the time and um, burning out all the time, uh, to take rests is one of these forgotten graces of daily life that could really stave off so many health disasters, I think, right? Um, to do this, even just a 15 minute break, if you have your tea, you know, little space, even at the office, whatever, you can take the time, you make the tea, mm -hmm. you take the time for the process, you, anxiety leaves, you know, mm. you slough up, you, but it has to be just about the tea, mm. right? This time, like if you're in England and you're having tea, it's about the tea, mm. right? You're in Tokyo, you're having the tea, it's about the tea. Mm. So many of these cultures, they just know how to let go mm. and let the tea time be the time where it's a blank. Mm. And then you go back to the day mm. and then you have that beautiful, once again, that expansion that can occur in space. Mm -hmm. The device of making tea creates the space. Mm -hmm. where the real health can transcend of letting go of the tense muscles, letting go of the stressed nerves, mm -hmm. letting go of the mind that is so bent on having to stay on this thing of accomplishing mm -hmm. this and then this and then this and then this. No, I can't take that 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you can. Mm -hmm. You have to. <laughs> yeah, and then L-theanine, definitely. To have caffeine and L-theanine in a balance in a product, mm -hmm. It's the only product that has a thing like that, mm -hmm. right? A lot of stimulant beverages are one way and they're just moving fast. The beauty of tea is that it's like, think of England when they, right, when tea time, it's the pure relaxation that gives you the energy to finish out your day. Mm -hmm. So it's giving you both. It's giving you the stop and expand. It's giving you the get ready to get going again, mm -hmm. both at the same time. What mm -hmm. else has this? Nothing. This is why it's the second most drunk beverage in the world next right. to water. Because right. it's sustainable. Right. It's sustainable. This is a critical term for tea. In our bodies, it's sustainable. So we should think about the antioxidants and the minerals and vitamins and that hydration aspect is kind of secondary. Let that go and no, just no, be no. present to the moment and I, drinking the tea? I would never say should. Okay. Should is silly, right? Whatever you want to. Some people sure. really are... They're attuned that way. Mm. Their natural way is no. Drink let me tea, look at the get these vitamins and we get these. Let vitamins. me look at the antioxidants. Let me look at the vitamin count. Let me look at the magnesium. Let me look at the potassium. Let me look at the selenium. Let me look at whatever's in this tea. Mm. Right. That's what's going to make me feel good about it. It should be that way. Mm. This is you're asking my estimation mm. of the value, health value of tea. Mm. For me, it begins with the process, and the process trumps all the physical health benefits cool. because nowadays, the day I'm living in in this body. People don't know how to stop, and that's what's killing most people, right. is not knowing how to stop truly mm. and just be without the mind continuing. Mm. Tea can give you that possibility at least. Mm. Antioxidants, very important, mm. right? All the minerals, all the everything, even caffeine can be very healthy mm. for people. People don't understand this. It's been made into a demon, mm. right? Anyway, oh. yeah, so I would say that's my answer, and it's... Short form. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm also curious to ask, and I know this is maybe personal to each person, um, but what's this, how can tea be fit into a spiritual practice? What is that? That's a good question. You have to define a spiritual practice. Well, I remember, Ma I remember Master <laughs> Wong, I remember a quote he shared, and it was, we're all spirits, and we become spiritual through ritual. Mm. Oh, I love that. I that that's was beautiful. In his book. Beautiful. Yes. I love that. And so that's what it is for me, is yeah. having different rituals in life. Remembrance is what he's saying. Mm. Right? You're already that, but you need something to remind you. Mm. I already knew what clean tea was. I needed Master Wong to tell me why the tea I was drinking mm. was what it was, even though I knew it was something. Mm -hmm. 
right? So we need, oftentimes, we need a device, right? You're already a spiritual being, if you want to talk in these type of terms. Mm -hmm. You need something to help you remember that. Mm -hmm. But what that even means is open to endless interpretation, sure. spiritual. I don't know what that sure. means, right? But the traditions mm -hmm. that have encapsulated tea as a way, mm -hmm. it's considered one of the ways, mm -hmm. right? In Japan, for a good reason, right? And in many traditions around the world, tea is really important for people in their ritual observances of what we call spirituality. Mm. Whether you're in Tibet or you're, you, I mean, you could be, I could name all the places, sure. you already know. So, yeah, I think to me the spirituality is just coming home to yourself and being aware because that's life. You're alive. You're spiritual because your spirit is activated, right? Mm. And yeah, in, in a remembrance, like, oh yeah, you remember me, thank you. Now, the blessing is you'll be able to see your daily life without so much confusion. Mm. I don't really know, I'm shooting in the dark on this answer. Cool. But really, I think coming home to yourself is really what that means. Um, yeah, why, do we, why would you whisk a bowl of tea and offer it to the Buddha and offer it to your, you know, your brother in the monastery and drink it yourself, you know, with such reverence? Mm. Right? Please allow me to come home to myself so I can really be of service. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so they talk about tea culture. Dig it. And, and, and tea tradition. You know this is the name of my last business name. Right? Really? Well, it was called Chai Kana, which means tea house in Farsi. Underneath our byline thing was tea culture. Chai Kana tea culture is what we were called. Very strange oh. for a store to be called that. <laughs> People were like, what is, what is that? <laughs> how pretentious, how presumptuous, right? Right? But, but um, actually, there was a reason. But yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, so I'm curious. I mean, I know, you know, they say Yunnan province, mm. uh, China. Sure. Uh, Taoism and Buddhism infuses, you know, all these different cultures where tea comes from mm, mm, mm. And, and every religion, essentially, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, what, how does tea fit into these different religions or these different philosophies and, and, and how do we kind of get that out of one cup of tea? <laughs> Next question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You got it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I love coming into uh, the Hidden Peak Tea House because there's so many beautiful teas, teaware, furniture. And I love just having an opportunity for David to, to take us around and show us a little bit. So David, could you kind of maybe start off with the different selection of teas that you have? Yeah, like I said before, we pretty much are focused now on green tea, black tea, and poor tea in our offerings in the shop, what we're selling retail. The menu still has uh, white teas and wulongs and some herbals uh, and such. Uh, don't have any yellow tea right now. So yeah, those are the teas that you would find in the store. It's quite a, quite a selection of poor tea mainly mm. um, and some blacks and some greens. Yeah. Beautiful. And then outside on your patio and throughout the tea house, there's beautiful furniture. Mm -hmm. Could you explain maybe a couple of the, the significant pieces of furniture that you have here? Yeah, well initially our outlook of course was we wanted to have handmade things surrounding us. You know, we're very old world that way. We just want to help remind people what it feels like to be in a really human environment, right? So uh, this is a, mostly things that machines didn't make out there. Um, you have some very interesting items. One that catches people's eyes constantly as they're walking by our gate is the large burl table that comes from the Himalayan foothills from the town of Tengchong in Yunnan province. And it's just a gorgeous burl, um, gigantic burl piece of wood out of the hills close to Burma. Um, amazing tea table, you know, just quite a foundation piece and a deep resonance. Uh, on the other side of the patio there's a table and we also have another one inside that's made from shipwrecked wood, from a, the boat wood from uh, about 300 years ago wow. off of Hong Kong. And it's a very, very cool table, so they bring up the shipwrecks and then they make tea furniture. It's a whole trend happening, you know, to make tea furniture out of shipwrecked wood. Wow. So the wood is transformed, it's very heavy, it's just got, once again, a deep resonance and um, they plant slate draining boards in the table and chess boards they add and everything. Very fun tables to use. Mm. But everything's unique. You know, each setting is different. So uh, we'd have to go around and look at each one. But there's, yeah, there's a lot of burl. Um, there's a lot of, every table has a drain is one thing that we're into. I don't know if anybody's really done that yet. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we set up the whole tea house with uh, drains in every table. So everybody can make Kung Fu tea at their own table. Okay. And yeah, you know, everything from uh, garage sales and, and, and auctions and such to, yeah. uh, you know, bringing stuff from China. 
you know, got a lot of stuff out there to use. You have a large selection of different teaware, uh, from the, the I Ching teapots to the cups to the trays and tables. What, what does someone need to start having their own practice of uh, Kung Fu Cha, if you can maybe guide us through that? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, in the true essence of Kung Fu, mm. really. You need nothing to make tea, and you need nothing even to execute Kung Fu tea. If you think you have to have a Yixing teapot, uh, you have to have a pitcher, you have to have uh, anything, then to me that's still a trap of some sort, mm. right? Thinking you have to have it a certain way. I've gone to houses where they had no teaware, but I had tea, but I didn't bring mine for some reason. Next thing you know, you grab a little bowl out of the, like a little sorbet bowl, and a saucer from something, you make a gaiwan. You can strain the tea leaves using the saucer on top of the little bowl. You get a Pyrex measuring cup out of the closet and you pour into that, there's your pitcher. Mm -hmm. Any little things will make your little cups. You have Kung Fu Cha right there. Mm. Very authentic. You're going to take yourself out of business with this. It mentality. doesn't matter. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you know, really, this is a love of tea. Right. That's why we're doing this. Cool. Um, but no, people want to buy these things and I do too. Mm -hmm. That's a, the next level is that if you can, why not? Right? So mm -hmm. we have all different levels. I have Kung Fu teapots that begin at $16 right now out on the shelf and ones that go up to four or $500 each. Um, I have poor teas on the shelf that start at $1.50 mm -hmm. and go up to 12000 per brick. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, cool. so you have such a wide range. But with um, what we're doing here that we didn't really see folks doing in the States very much is adding antiques into what they offer. Um, mm -hmm. we, we love antiques and we love using old things in our tea practice. Um, there's old traditions of bringing the knowledge and the hard work and the um, formative stages of anything to the now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Through the use of the relics of those times past. Mm -hmm. So by bringing ancient things to the modern tea table, it's a reminder of those who came before us and made mm -hmm. these things for us, mm -hmm. um, who created these ways that we now take advantage of. You know, there's something encoded in those old things. Beautiful. So we offer a lot of old things. Beautiful. You know, mainly Asian, but anything tea related from any culture that honors tea is what we want to have here. If you had an opportunity to kind of place something in this tea library vault that I'm trying to create with um, our viewers here, what is some essence that uh, you think would be something that would be very valuable for people looking at this now or in the, in the future that they can come back and get something that David really thought, if you think one thing is imp important or not, or just, I don't know, something that you think would be cool to, for someone to check out? Yeah. Be authentic. Mm. Nothing else, really. You know, whatever you resonate with, don't be ashamed. Mm. If a styrofoam cup and tap water and a tea bag from some low grade source is going to give you all that you need right now, mm. that's the holy grail of tea, mm -hmm. honestly. But always don't sh sell yourself short. Mm -hmm. If you know there's better and you need better, but you're feeling like you've got to be poverty conscious about your choice or whatever when you actually could get the quality then bop yourself out of that maybe, you know, mm. and try something better if mm. you know that's what you need in your life. Cool. Um, yeah, so I would say, yeah, just, you know, don't, just be authentic and, and anything, don't, the pretentiousness is something, even, I'll be accused of that, anybody in tea will be accused of that because we do have preferences. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm very into poor tea and I'm saying, I, there's so many things I don't want to drink or want even my customers to drink, right. so I think it'll tear the bodies apart. But that could sound very pretentious, and I'm very, I am very biased, and I am judgmental in the ways that I am um, in those <laughs> ways. But always with transformation in mind, mm. and back to our original statement of this conversation, it is fluid. Mm. My biases change constantly, um, but they always sound very fixed, because that's my nature. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm always changing, and I recognize that, and I hope everybody else can recognize that in themselves. And just always upgrading. Yeah, it's cool. always possible to do that. Absolutely, thank Dig you. It. Yeah. So we'd like to close off every uh, tea library episode with a question to the audience uh, to create an opportunity for you guys to share some feedback and uh, maybe give you an opportunity to take part in future videos that we'll do. And so the question for today is, you know, what's your tea story? You know, we all have come to tea in different ways and all have different transformations from, you know, taking our first sip. So I'd love if everyone could give an opportunity to, to write down what uh, something that's happened with them, like what, whatever their tea story may be, we'd love to hear it. Uh, David, I just really want to thank you for giving us this opportunity it's to drink uh, your wonderful tea at your tea house here. And uh, again, look forward to coming down to Santa Cruz sometime and uh, drinking some more tea with you, sir. Let's do it. Respects. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, all. All right. Thank you all.